Hey everyone, this is your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. This is by far um, a topic that's on everyone's mind is travel, right? As the world opens up again, we are, are curious and um, exploring different opportunities and trying to take advantage of these, these new discounts. And I have the expert, the expert on the show today. We're going to talk about, and she's going to spill some of the tea, not all the tea, she can't give you all the tea. Right, but she can spill some of the tea on travel and how you can save big on these discounts that she's going to share in these examples and scenarios that she's done professionally herself. Stay tuned, stay with us. You won't want to miss one second of this incredible woman. Here we go. Welcome to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I'm your host, Marcus of the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, your favorite gentleman. And today we are bringing author, travel writer, bank, former banker, travel blogger, and founder of the Smart Travelista. 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 Uh, previously, she was a travel agent and banker, and she has her MBA and studied travel writing and creative nonfiction. Um, she. Miss Linda King is coming to the stage to help us figure out the secrets and hijack some discounts and savings as we proceed to open the world up and travel again and see friends and families and loved ones again. And also, more importantly, save with up, up, uh, up fuel costs and, and, and everything's just skyrocketing and overpriced. She's here to help us get to a better place. Help me welcome to the stage, Miss Linda King. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for joining us on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, Miss Linda. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. It is a true honor to have you on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. You are unique, ma'am, and but you have some in-depth knowledge that we need on traveling. What, 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 you have an incredible mind. And you have an MBA. What got you started in travel blogging? What got you started in, 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 in sharing your knowledge and your experience over the years? Well, as you mentioned in, in the intro, I was a travel agent with an airline. Um, so I've basically been traveling my whole life. So very lucky as a child, we went traveling around Australia, which as you can tell by my accent, I'm Australian. Um, so yeah, so travel's been a big part of my life. But Travel blogging came about because I was getting a lot of um, people were asking me about how to travel cheaply and asking for all the travel tips. And I was getting too many people asking me these questions. And I thought, well, you know what, I need to write this down, um, have a resource. Someone, one of the travellers actually said to me, have you got a blog? Do you have a website? And I thought, no, I don't. Maybe I need to get one. Um, so people can go and, and get the, look at these tips and learn a bit more how to travel cheaply. Makes sense. You were also a travel agent. Uh, and what was it like being a travel agent? Do you still, in, in 2022, recommend people seek out travel agents to save the most on travel? Or, or are there other ways or other methods? So it really depends. Um, travel agents have got a place in the marketplace, I believe. Um, for people that are time poor and maybe don't know how to arrange their travel. So obviously with a travel agent, you're paying for their expertise and that comes at a cost. Um, but if you've got the time, you feel confident um, and you and you like doing a bit of research, you can most definitely get a lot of bargain travel bargains by doing it yourself online. Once you've done it once, then you've got the confidence to then continue doing it. So maybe the first time you might think, oh, have I done everything right? But once you've gone on that trip and everything's worked out fine, then you, you, you'll never look back. Absolutely. Is that how you got your start? Um, is you, you just booked your first trip, your first uh, trip yourself, saved a bunch of money and said, I can do this. Is that how that got started there? Yeah, well, I mean, look, I was booking for other clients. So I knew how to book. Um, I was booking their trips. But then what I did was I booked my own trips. Um, and yeah, so it, for me, it's now really very, um, how could you say, very common knowledge. 
Like it's just, you know, a habit that I've got um, and I can do it quite easily. But obviously when someone's doing it first up, you know, it's a little bit daunting at first, but it's just about breaking it down into baby steps. You know, you need a flight, you need accommodation, you might need touring or a car. So it's just about not looking at it overwhelmingly. It's about breaking it down into steps. Absolutely. What's the most amount of money you've saved on a trip? And where did you go? The most amount of money would be probably from about Melbourne to London in business class. So what I do, um, and um, you can read this in my books as well, I do all my travel on points, so LI miles. I don't pay for any of the airfares. Um, so probably the most that I've saved, probably around about six, seven thousand dollars would be the airfare from Melbourne to London return in business class. Did you say I'm sorry, did you say six to seven thousand dollars is savings that you save yeah. on a trip? Yes, that would be what it would cost me in Australian dollars to fly Melbourne to London in business class. So by doing that all on points. Um, and maybe paying some airport taxes, yeah, probably around about that much um, I've saved. But it's about having a strategy um, when you're building your points. Absolutely. Can, can you spill, what's the strategy? What's the trick? Is it a website? Is it is it Expedia? Is it going directly to the airlines and negotiating the best prices? What's what's kind of, what, can you share any um, travel hacks um, is the term of the jargon. I just learned this today, travel hacking. <laughs> Travel. Yeah. What, what's a what's a tip that you can share that that people can save? Maybe not thousands, but a, a couple dollars. Um, what's something that you recommend? Yeah. So what I recommend absolutely book online. Book all the travel before you leave. So don't pay for it as you as you're going. Um, also look at um, positive exchange rates. So if you're going to a country. Um, and you see that the exchange rate against your currency is looking really positive, then purchase some money beforehand because you're actually getting better deal with your spending money and, and what you're doing over there. Um, another thing that I do quite regularly is don't travel in peak season. Travel in low and shoulder seasons. Um, and also look at the flights that maybe aren't as comfortable. So, you know, at maybe 6 a.m. in the morning or late at night because they're going to be the ones that you're going to save a lot of money on. Um, the, one, the comfortable ones when you've woken up or you're having your lunch are going to be the most expensive to travel on. Makes sense. I love that. I absolutely love yeah. that. And, and that's huge. Is there, so is, 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 can you debunk this myth for me? Is there a benefit to booking in advance, like maybe a year out? Or, you know, six months out? Is there any advantages there? Yeah, so there, there is an advantage booking ahead of time, but you've got to balance that because if you book a year out, there could be actually a special closer to the time that you could actually get, save more money on. So it, it's just about balancing it out. So maybe not a year. Look from about six to three months out. Probably six months is your optimum because what will happen is, and that's another big tip I was going to say. People need to sign up to the mailing list. So the travel services that you use a lot, make sure you're on their mailing list because they're going to announce when their sales are and you're going to know when the sales are and you'll go, okay, actually I want to go in those months and you'll get a, a better deal. So it's just about balancing it. So 12 months, yeah, I mean, depending on your plans, like if you need to make sure that you've got that in in a you know, booked in advance and do it at 12 months. But what I try and do is around six months. Um, and then you'll you'll see the best bargains, be able to grab them and then have also have everything paid for. Makes sense. Makes sense. Miss Linda, I want to spill some tea on the Gentleman Style Podcast show today. Um, what we're looking at is your book. Um, this is your latest mm -hmm. creation. This is a series of books that you've authored. Um, the Smart Travelista's Guide. How to increase your airline loyalty points and fly for free. What can readers ex expect when they purchase this book? What, what inspired it? What, are, what, what can people expect when they purchase the book? Yeah, so it's, it's a really around the strategy and building points. So firstly, what you've got to do, and I won't give too much away, you've got to work out which airlines you're going to use. And then it's about building the strategy to maximize your points. 
So, and it's about looking at your day-to-day life and your financial situation, other things that you would normally do that you could utilise that the airline's offering as a partner. So it's really about understanding what your goal is, what you're aiming for, what airline's going to be best suited or airlines, so it might be more than one airline, and then building a strategy around that. Um, Once you understand your airline loyalty program, it becomes really evident and really easy about how you can maximise your points. And flying for free is always the ultimate. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm sort of discussing what I do in my own travel. I do fly for free. I don't pay for those airfares. Um, So it's just the tried and true tips that I use. Um, And once you know them, it's like, oh, okay, (laughs) I better get into it and start doing this. Um, But it does save money. And at the end of the day, like, Marcus, we all want to save money, don't we? And more money saved means more travel, which is always a good thing. It's a great, great thing. So get the book, y'all. Look how affordable it is too. Um, to save thousands of dollars, like the Travelista herself, um, get the book. But again, there's a series of books. So it's more than one, right? She has a whole yeah. line of books um, yeah. talking about safety, flying for free, managing your budget, bargain shopping um, for overseas when you're overseas. So this this is not a one and done book. There's a whole package to her. That yeah. is phenomenal. Uh, why is safety important? Why does that stand out? Um, why did you write about that? Is are people, you know, getting hurt or are people getting sick? What what was the, the thought process there? So safety is really like we, we come from countries, you know, yourself and myself, where we're pretty safe countries that we live in, to an extent. Um, you you might be travelling to countries that aren't so safe. Um, so there's always good strategies to use. Um, and also if you're travelling alone, alone, you know, if you're a woman travelling alone or even a guy travelling alone, there's, there's certain things that you need to do to keep safe. Um, I thought health and safety was a good thing to, make, to sort of mesh together because obviously health's very important. Health was always very important travelling, but it's also paramount, paramount now. Um, but the safety, it's just about, um, you know, we would walk down the street with our lovely watches on and our jewellery. Sometimes that's not a good thing to be doing in other countries that are a little bit poorer or a little bit more unsafe because you're actually telling everyone that you're a tourist (laughs) and that you could become a target of theft. Um, So it's just really common sense tips around what what not to do when you're travelling just to keep yourself a bit more safe. And, you know, obviously we want to travel in one piece and come back in one piece. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's really the, the the tips on how to do that. Absolutely. Linda King, y'all. We have one quick commercial break. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. We got to pay some bills, y'all. See you guys soon. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new, 
an exciting guest to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. We are back. We have the incredible Travelista herself. Smart Travelista, excuse me. Smart Travelista, Linda King. And she is here spilling some of the tea, not all the tea, on how some travel hacks that you all, we all, I can use to save some money, big time money, right? If you missed that, she just shared earlier in the show um, that she's saved over six to seven thousand dollars in travel costs, um, traveling from London to where was London from? From Melbourne to London. Melbourne to London, seven thousand dollars. That's huge. That's phenomenal. Uh, Miss Linda, Miss King, you you shared. Um, you, you travel for free. You've done that numerous times, and that's what you you teach and you educate others on. Um, are, is those point systems, are you talking about purchasing credit cards, or how do I go about getting those points and building up those points? Is it through the pro, frequent flyer programs or something else? Yeah, so the frequent flyer program, so credit cards is one way, um, but there's also a lot of other um, partners that you can utilise. So accommodation, um, there's also... Um, travel products, you name it, um, but it depends on your, your program. Um, shopping is a really good one as well, so online shopping. Um, and in Australia, and I don't know whether you would have it in the US, but in Australia we can actually get points for getting fuel, so for our cars, as well as um, doing like normal supermarket shopping. So, you know, everyone does their supermarket shopping every week or every month. True. Um, so it's a really good way of building up the points. You have no choice. Yeah, I need groceries. I got to eat. I mm -hmm. have to eat. So that's a unique way to save. Are the travel discounts and promotions similar if traveling overseas? Um, or is it is there a different um, travel hack or travel secrets for that? So overseas or domestic. So um, obviously you're going to get the probably the best bargains internationally. Um, yeah, but it just depends on your country, you know. Um, US is probably very similar to Australia. Um, we do have, you know, um, domestic discounts, but international is where you're really going to say the bigger discounts. Yes, ma'am. You have you incredible knowledge. You have insight, ma'am. You have insight that we need your help in. Um, what is something that that is not necessarily well known? You were a travel agent, so you helped clients save money on travel. What's a travel nugget? that the airlines may or may not want us to know. Can you spill any any nugget on that? What's the secret there? Yes. Um, inside the plane near your seat might not be as clean as you think it is. <laughs> oh, so my suggestion, <laughs> we, would, we would do it anyway now. Um, always bring those, you know, those handy wipes, alcohol wipes with you. Um, yeah, it's all around the airline cleaners not having a real lot of time to clean the plane, right? So um, always give everything a wipe down. I think everyone would do that anyway. But, um, but yeah, always good to do that. And just, yeah, wipe your hands, wipe everything you touch is always a good, good habit to have. Um, probably not something that the airlines want us to know, but it's probably very, very much the same in every airline. Absolutely. Wipe it down, disinfect. And wipe it down again, please. Don't don't get caught with any anything. People, I've heard I've heard rumors. You know, people just fall asleep, they pee in the seat, get up, and they keep moving. So yeah, clean it, yeah. sanitize it. Um, one of the things I I've experienced while traveling is if I show up early enough and I check in and I go to the kiosk, um, versus the flight attendant at the desk, um, sometimes they'll offer me a, a upgrade for a, a really big discount. Um, they'll say, hey, do you want to upgrade to economy or business class for like 250 bucks versus, you know, the thousands or thousands of dollars that it costs. So that was, that was a travel hack that I learned, which is why I, I tend to check in early when I'm on travel because 
sometimes I get I usually get those offers, and that's that means the world of difference if your flight is several hours, right? Mm. Um, and comfortability. So that's a travel hack I I, I experienced. That's something small compared to the thousands Miss Miss King has saved. Mm. Huge, huge deal. Miss King, I want you to debunk a myth right here for us. Um, any are there any savings using a travel agent? Do you recommend it? Um, do you do you still book for clients today or are you um, moved on to other things? So, yeah, so the travel agents, travel like the big thing about travel agents is they charge commission. Mm. So usually they're on really low pay, their base pay. So the, where they make their money is the commission. So they get approached by a lot of different travel companies and you might be, you know, you might know what you want but they might steer you to something else because they're getting that higher commission, which is probably reasonable for them because they're making money, more money with that travel service. Um, as long as you're aware of that, that you're actually paying for their expertise, but you're probably also paying for the commission that they're, they're receiving. Um, I don't use a travel agent. I haven't used them since I was a travel agent. I do everything online myself. Um, but, yeah, and, and I help family and friends as well. Um, I don't have time to actually do that um, in my business because I actually work full-time as well in another job. Um, but who knows in the future I may go back into doing that. Um, but, yeah, look, there's a, there's a place for travel agents. As I mentioned before, if you don't have time and you're time poor and you just need that trip booked quickly, then go to the travel agent. But just understand that it may cost you a little bit more. Um, but if you're really looking to save money, online is the way to go and book it. Um, you know, and, and once you do it once, you'll you'll look at the money saving and go, "Wow, I've got to do this from now on." Um, but there's, I wouldn't say not good to go to a travel agent. It's it's individual choice really, and people's circumstances. So they really need to just go, "Yeah, I, I might try this," or "No, I'll go to the travel agent." Yeah, if you have the time, yeah. If you have the time, you can do it yourself. But if you don't, and you you know you want a professional to really get those those arranged for you in the discounts, yeah, use a travel mm -hmm. agent. Makes perfect sense. Any discounts or savings with traveling by train or travel hacks by cruise lines? Any any discounts there or travel hacks that you recommend? Yeah, again with the trains and, and the cruises. Well, probably not so much the cruises, but the trains definitely. Look at off peak times. Travel. You know, it might be really early in the morning and you'll need to get up early, but you're always going to get a cheaper ticket doing that. Um, I did that myself um, before the pandemic um, when I was going um, through to Salzburg. I was in Vienna. I went to Salzburg and I got a cheaper ticket early in the morning. So I slept on the train um, to, you know, and so that was good. Cruises, um, cruises, you just probably need to look at the overall costing. So, again, if you've signed up to the cruise mailing list, the company that offers the cruises, they're going to tell you when their sales are on. Um, so, uh, you know, if you can go in that those times or those dates, then absolutely take it. Um, I dare say, look, I haven't really looked at cruises lately, but because of the pandemic, I think there's probably going to be a few discounts around with cruises because they were hit hard um, when that happened. So um, it's probably worth just keeping an eye out. But, yeah, definitely with trains. Sometimes you can get a, a cheaper ticket on a train than actually flying somewhere if, if it's a close, you know, if it's if pretty close. Especially in Europe, we would say, you know, you could probably get a train ticket cheaper um, than getting a, a, an airline ticket. For sure. For the same what's, distance. Your, what's your favourite travel destination? Oh, I have to say Italy, but I absolutely love Europe. Um, and, and look, I really pretty much love the whole world, Marcus. I love the States as well. Um, I just think we've got so many places and not enough time to travel to them in. Um, but if I have to pick one place, I think it'd be Europe. For me, because we're so far away, we're right, right on the other side of the world, I think Europe, I'd love to be really close to Europe so I could go there every weekend. Um, not possible, though. <laughs> one day, one day. That's the yeah. goal. That's the goal. 
Miss King, you are phenomenal and you are my hero. I appreciate you so much. Any final tips, any words of encouragement to that young girl, or that young audience on the fence trying to save a little bit of money? They want to travel. They need to travel. We've been locked in our homes for about two years now and we just got to get out. We got to go travel. Um, any final tips for, for my audience? Yeah, I'd say be brave. You can do it. I know it seems daunting if you're booking your own travel. Take it baby steps, step by step. You can do it. You'll save a lot of money. And then you'll go, oh, my God, I've got to do this from now on. You'll leave the travel agents and you'll never go to them again. Um, but just realise that you can do it. It's not as hard as you think it is. It just takes a bit of work at the start um, and a bit of research. So if you need any tips, you know where you can find me. Um, but you, you, absolutely, you can do it. How can we find you? Yeah, I'm on the on www.thesmarttravelista.com. Um, I'm also on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So um, Facebook and Instagram, The Smart Travelista and Twitter, The Underscore Travelista. Always happy for a chat. Reach out, answer any of your questions. Love it, love it, love it. Linda King, y'all. Ms. Linda, I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to be with us here. I'm going to leave this on the screen. That is the smart travelista, travelista, I-S-T-A dot com for my audio audio listeners. Thank you, Ms. Ms. King. Thank you for being here and spending time and educating us on these travel hacks. Get the book, y'all. Get the book. You have no choice. If you got that cabin fever and you need to get out, get the book. Travel hacks and secrets galore. Thank you, Ms. King. We appreciate you. We love you. Have a safe and wonderful day. And don't give up. Don't ever quit. We need you. We need what you're doing. And what you're doing is incredible. And so I thank you. Thank you, Marcus. All the best. Absolutely. And thank you, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. I hope this helps. I hope this was informational. I hope this was inspirational. Get that website. Website link um, for her book is in on Amazon. You can get a copy today. And it's a very affordable. Check her out. Thank you all. Like I always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your families, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus Norman, your favorite gentleman, and Linda King, the smart travelista, signing off. Love you guys. Bye.